Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Wee Knives Angst. Uh, this is a, they call it the Lundquist Angst. You guys can see the uh, designer's name right there. It's a really interesting knife from Wee. It kind of blurs the line between Civivi and Wee. Civivi being their budget line uh, and then Wee Knives generally makes knives in the two to $300 price point. So this is kind of in between. Um, it's kind of like, it makes me think of the kite fin um, or uh, what was the, the, was it the Practic? Uh, there was a few knives in there that are kind of, they're, they're, they're more so Wee Knife high end. There's more complexity, you know, some of the higher end materials that go into it, but they're made in a way that keeps the price point sort of in between. And that's, that's again what we're looking at here. There are multiple versions of this knife different color schemes, things like that. Um, so I will link this knife right down in the description and uh, Wee Knives in general if you'd like to see what they've got currently available. Um, this knife was sent to me by the Apex Passeron Group. Shout out to the Apex Passeron Group uh, for sending this guy along. And that means by extension, um, Wee Knives. So thank you very much Wee Knives for providing that to our group. Uh, thank you also my, to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and other benefits, there's of course a link right down in the description. Your support means the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. So overall length of the Wee Angst, which always makes me think of a fussy teenager. Um, overall length <laughs> is so, nothing. I'm not coming. I know there's a lot of people, a lot of different age ranges, right? But when you if you look up the definition of angst right anyways overall length seven inches overall uh blade length three inches and it's right on the line so be careful about that with legality stuff right uh not a huge knife not a micro knife but not a huge knife let's do some size comparisons up against the ontario rat model one rat one is coming in at 8.6 inches overall so you can see there kind of get an idea how about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. So there you go. It's just a little bit uh, shorter than the Para 3. And last but not least, the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Mini Griptilian coming in a little bit shorter at 6.75 inches overall. How's the action on this guy? Um, this uh, knife is a combination of steel for the liner, um, carbon fiber, and some G10 inlays. Uh, it is a very thin blade stock. Very, very thin blade stock. It is running on bearings. Uh, the steel is S35VN. Just some quick extra information there, but there's not a lot of weight and mass to the blade and the tip is very thin. It's also not a long blade, which means the knife does not rely pretty really at all of weight and mass of the blade. It relies on the detent strength and the shape of the flipper tab. The detent strength is great and the positioning of the flipper tab is also great considering that this is obviously meant as a uh, is completely and totally symmetrical design. It's very pill shaped, right? So to to achieve that, you know, the, that look, uh, the flipper tab is going to have to be shaped a, a certain way. Uh, but they also managed to get it in a good spot where you can honestly, you can see there, I was push buttoning it. Yeah. And also your generic light switch, right? And no matter which uh, area you, which way you decide to do it, it is comfortable. What's not as comfortable is disengaging the liner lock, and that's because to achieve this symmetrical aesthetic, they did not scallop it right here, which means there's not a lot of extra, you know, convenient room to get in there and engage the liner lock, right? It's just a space right here. You have to push your finger down in and move it over. That, uh, you know, will result in a little bit of pinching, and you can see there it's starting to pinch my skin together. After about 10 or so flips, it's something that if you like to sit around and fidget with this knife, 10 or so, you're gonna end up putting it down on the couch and waiting a little bit, right? The appeal to this is not necessarily in fidget factor, right? The deployment's good. The positioning of the flipper tab's good. Um, the appeal to this is aesthetics. This looks like a very fancy tactical letter opener. Um, and it is undoubtedly meant for light duty EDC or just regular EDC, right? And I think they did accomplish that. So that's the only qualm I have with the action. There's no double clutch or anything like that. 
it's not necessarily even the action. It's just what's involved with the action, which is eventually disengaging it, right? It is not sharp on both sides. For those of you cringing that I'm touching this, this is a false edge, not sharp at all. This edge is sharp. Um, and that is um, because <laughs> it's not a good idea to have a folding knife that is, even though Rick Hinderer did it, and I'm using the flipper tab, you obviously can use the flipper tab if the case was that this edge was sharp. Um, it, I'm, I'm glad that it isn't, right? I'm glad that I can, you know, absent-mindedly uh, do what I normally do and just use my finger to touch the spine of the blade and close it. Um, it is smooth. Uh, it might take a little bit of an encouragement to go down there. I mean, the, the action is perfectly acceptable. It's just, it's not going to fall shut um, because of the, because of how thin and light the blade is. How about some, uh, uh, how about a carry profile? So thickness up against the pair of three, it is actually because of the scales and their fact that they're just the thickness of the scales, I guess, and the contour. Well, it's thicker than the pair of three. It is contoured though, and the entire package is pretty small, so that really doesn't bother me all that much. Uh, how about length and height up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3, two knives that have awkward carry profiles and nobody ever complains about. You can see there, excess thickness in this knife over the Para 3 doesn't bother me at all because it is simply shorter uh, in, in length and in height than either of these knives. And that creates an overall much more convenient carry profile for a lot of people who nitpick stuff like that, which is fine. Um, I just don't have a problem with the excess thickness. Um, also, uh, the uh, the knife, because of the materials that it's using, and because there, it's not a long knife, and it's not a the blade's not thick, right? Um, it's also a really lightweight knife. Um, there is a partially on the inside, and by the way, you can um, pick up my flashlight down in the description. Uh, there is a liner on one side that is fully. It's like a cartridge liner, right? On the other side, there's no steel whatsoever. Um, and what that yields is uh, an impressive weight um, for people who really, really, you know, get hung up on the lightweight thing. You're going to be happy with this. Uh, holy, really? Yeah, man, 1.83 ounces. This is a super lightweight knife. Absolutely. For those of you who are used to the bug out and pair of three uh, lightweights, yeah, go ahead. Carry this in leather pants. Carry it in athletic shorts. Carry it in whatever right well the scales are kind of thick well it's just this so it, the whole thing is pill shaped it's just not going to take it, it's just not going to be a cumbersome object this is something that's going to be easy to carry no matter who you are unless you are somebody who uh lives in an area where you can't carry knives that have a three inch blade or longer because this one's right on the line for everybody else uh even the most nitpicky of folks um this is going to be just fine let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy of this knife so again we have uh, this sort of pill-shaped uh, carbon fiber and G10 combination. Um, the edges are a little bit sharp here, not really that big of a deal. Um, again, keep in mind the idea was to create a certain aesthetic. So in terms of like ergonomic lines, yeah, I mean, you can hang on to it. It's just, there's just nothing here for ergonomics. You can technically get a full four finger grip on it, but why? Because are you really gonna use this knife that hard? I mean, considering where I would use, this is kind of like, I don't know, classy tactical office carry. If <laughs> you feel like you need a tactical letter opener to take to a cocktail party, right? Here's your guy. Um, but I don't know how important perfect ergonomics are on a knife like this that's really not going to be used in an environment that would call for ergonomics that create a secure grip. Um, it is a, a little bit of a downside, though. I think what they could have done here uh, to keep it symmetrical is, and, and at the same time, um, you know, make it ergonomic and uh, create better access to that liner lock is create two scallops on both sides here, right? I think that would, you, they would still keep the look uh, and it would just make the entire thing a little bit easier to hang on to and much easier to engage the liner lock. That's my criticism on the handle. Um, considering a lot of the time you're really gonna be holding it like this, I do appreciate these little traction lines right here. I mean, if I was gonna open a package or a letter or something, I probably would hold it like that. And it is pretty comfortable like this. I, I just, I don't have much of a, an issue with that. I mean, considering this, you, you would generically hold it like this. Um, so that's cool, I like that. I like that Wii puts their branding on the pivot and keeps it off the blade, that is definitely preferable. I love the, I don't know, the simplicity of this. I'm not big on the green 
uh, the OD green with the uh, carbon fiber contrast. But like I said, you can get this in black. And I think they have like one with a black ba blade. And they've also got one with gray G10, right? So whatever. Pick the one that you that you think looks the best. I love their bronze finished hardware. I think that looks nice. Wish it extended to the clip, but that's okay that it doesn't. Uh, the adjustment side is over here, which by the way, we never did the hardware check. Let's go ahead and do that and get out my tools here. Um, I've got some expensive options and some inexpensive options for tools. You can find them all right down in my description. I think like most Wii knives, this is going to be T8 across the board. Let's go ahead and check that here real quick. Adjustment head is T8. Body screws are T8 and T8, yeah. Thank you, Wii, for being awesome. T8 is better than T6. They are easier to adjust. The heads are bigger. The bits are bigger. There's less, less of a chance of it, um, you know, something stripping out. Uh, so that's great. And the hardware is pretty minimal. Another interesting thing you can see here in this pocket clip, the screw that holds the pocket clip in is actually underneath. Um, so to remove the pocket clip, and I, I don't know, that's kind of neat, right? To remove the pocket clip, you do have to remove the scales unless you have one of those, it's like a Torx key that's bent and just short enough to fit in there, but in, I don't know, whatever, it's fine. The pocket clip doesn't necessarily have to come off for disassembly anyway, so I don't know that I'd really have a problem with that. Anyways, um, yeah, the aesthetics are pretty good. Uh, I, I would have preferred it in a different color, but that's fine, that's just a preference thing. Um, the, uh, the corners are a little bit sharp, but not that big of a deal, right? There's not really, I can't say that there's truly a hot spot though, because I can't imagine myself gripping the knife hard enough for those corners to matter, given where I would use this knife. So that's uh, kind of unnecessary criticisms there. Uh, something I love is that the, now here's the thing. A lot of people are going to look at that and go, it doesn't go perfectly. It's only sharp on one side. So it actually does. That's very, very precision considering they had to consider where the cutting bevel was. Uh, listen, this is, I, I'm, I'm gonna come down on Benchmade in a, a, a Wii knife review. Benchmade, if we can do this at this price point, why can't you do it at the $400 price point? Come on, these companies who are doing these grinds, if you're messing it up, right? If you mess it up and you did it on a $50 knife, okay. If you're putting a three, four, five hundred dollar knife on there and you're not getting that grind right, shame on you. This is great. This is exactly where it should be. Even though it doesn't come perfectly down the center, it does meet up exactly where it should considering where the cunning bevel is. So I like that. They also got the fuller in exactly the right place, meaning you get to appreciate what you want to appreciate about this knife, which is the symmetry. That's nice. People who are picking this up, I guarantee they're going to be concerned with that. So that's really, really cool. Um, this is not a thick blade. Uh, I'm not going to measure it. It's probably like nothing on the spine. There's, and that's good because there's not a lot of room for it to drop to the cutting edge considering the thickest point is right down through the middle. That being said, it's okay behind the edge. It is going to do exactly what it's expected to do, which is open small cardboard package or cardboard boxes uh, open uh, you know thin letters and, and little envelopes and things like that that's fine it's going to do that that's what it's expected to do the tip is very pointy very very pointy and very delicate the blade is made out of S35VN but you should not go digging around with this knife or prying with it you will snap that tip it doesn't matter what it's made out of you're going to snap it right unless it's adamantium which is not real um, yeah, uh, these areas up here are basically sharpening, well, on this side it's a sharpening tool. I would not call this a finger tool. Don't try to put your finger up there, right? The blade looks nice. It has kind of a, sort of a dark tumbled finish, dark maybe acidy sort of finish. It's, it's nice. It's not really tumbled. It's just a subdued, steely looking finish. And like I said, it is somewhat, I'm getting some of the reflections here. It is somewhat. It looks nice. I don't have a problem with it. The whole, the blade all the way around is just great. And the only branding they have on there is just the Lundquist. And then it says down here, S35VN, which is great. Stainless holds a decent edge, nice and tough for the composition. So that's great. Uh, pocket clip, again, this is a, pop a popsicle stick style clip, but what better design to have this clip than this? <laughs> the whole thing is a popsicle stick. So actually I'm okay. Normally I'm like, that's nah, boring. Titanium, it's finished the same way that the blade is, right? Uh, it's it's symmetrical, goes right down. You can see there it meets up with that line perfectly. Yeah, I'm okay with that. They also carved this little area out right here so make, to make sure that it, it was you know actually pretty deep. It's about that that's gonna be sticking up. And this has the properly shaped ramp, which means it's not gonna fight your pants. 
I got no problem with the clip whatsoever. Uh, something that is an issue periodically, if you're not paying attention on, uh, to which side the clip is on, every now and then you'll find yourself pulling the knife out, laying it down, picking it up, and doing this. Uh, oh, it doesn't open that way. It only opens this way, which is something that is frustrating with a symmetrical design like this. Yeah, all you have to do is fill for the clip, but I'm, I promise you, if you're not used to this design, you haven't adapted to this yet, at least a few times you're going to do that, and you're going to wreck your, whoops, that was the right side, you're going to do this. Right? I'm doing it on camera. I'm forgetting which side it's opening from. You're going to wreck your finger trying to open it or it's going to get frustrating or right in the moment when you need it, you're going to have to fight opening it. It's just, it's going to happen sometimes, right? But after a while, you'll adapt to it. And considering which side you're going to be pulling it from, right? It's really only when you get it out, lay it down, and you forget which side is what. Um, that's really the only time it's going to happen. This is a liner lock. So it doesn't, it's a steel liner lock. It doesn't need steel lock bar inserts. Already steel on titanium or steel on steel contact. Locking up at about 50%. The blade is perfectly centered, which is great. Doesn't need an over travel stop because it is a countersunk liner, which means the liner or the uh, scales themselves actually act as the stop. And we have no blade play in any direction, which is what I expect from Wii. The um, stop pin, excuse me, I bumped the camera. I don't know if we can see it. Can we see it? Get my flashlight. Stop pin is internal. You can see it reflecting there. It's actually one that stays, yeah, it's located right here. You can see it reflecting right there, that bar of steel. It actually stays positioned as you move the blade around. Not quite as good as one that follows the blade or external stops, right? But it's fine. Perfectly acceptable. We don't need excess durability on a knife like this because this is a knife that's made to be used for light tasks. Little things that I can complain about. Uh, there needs to be a scallop of some sort, some, maybe symmetrical scallop, so you can easily access that liner lock because it's kind of a pinch, right? It's going to be kind of frustrating if you accidentally try to deploy it from the wrong side. Um, the edge geometry is very delicate at the tip, but then again, that's not necessarily a, a flaw, right? It's just, it, it is what it is because of the design. Um, what else can I complain about here? Uh, for I mean, for what they tried to accomplish, I think they did a great job. Um, this is cool, and uh, I think a lot of people will really like this. Um, truthfully, after handling this, here's what I want to see. I want we to do a, um, a much larger version of this, and I want it to be a titanium frame lock. Um, or titanium with some carbon fiber inlays, and maybe you still do the sub liner lock or a sub titanium. It would, ultimately, I'd love to see titanium with a sub titanium liner lock kind of for a point of a lot of people are like ah oh, that's kind of redundant well look at like the um or well no that's not a sub titanium frame lock uh or no like uh like uh the um uh what are they called? the holt specter v4 is titanium scales with a sub titanium uh liner lock that has a steel lock bar insert i love the idea of that larger right some carbon fiber inlays or just textured titanium and then we have m390 for the blade maybe a longer blade love the idea of that this is okay right but it just makes me want a more premium version of a knife that looks really really cool it's got good steel okay looking materials kind of feels super lightweight right and then it's at a price price point that's on the teetering point for a lot of people. This knife comes in at about 140 to 155 dollars depending on the setup that you get, right? We're kind of teetering out of the budget realm and into the high-end production world, but not quite the ultimate premium, the ultra premium world, and it feels okay at that price. Honestly, I think the price is justified. It's just when you pick it up, it's like, eh, I'd rather pay more money and get a more premium version of this knife that's larger and maybe a little bit more dense, a little bit more solid feeling, if nothing else than just to have the novelty of it. That being said, what you're getting here and for what you're paying for it is good. You're getting a combination of G10 and carbon fiber with S35VN and it's running on bearings. The inlay work is very impressive. We didn't really talk about that. The inlay work is really, really good, right? You're getting a titanium pocket clip and you're getting a symmetrical design that has a lot of like you know, things that, there's a lot of easy potential flaws here and they did a lot of it right. We just, I really, we need an extra, we've got kind of the, a Gail Bradley 2 situation going on here with ease of access to the liner lock. It's kind of, it's just an uncomfortable pinch, right? Especially since that jimping is on there. There just needs to be scallops on both sides, right? That's really all I can say. This is, um, this is cool. It's not my favorite knife of all time, but I, I really can't argue with what they've got going on here, you know? 
for people who are really interested in this style, I mean, I think this would make a good little EDC knife, right? More of what's here is aesthetic than, you know, utilitarian. But then again, considering what you're going to be using it for, um, it doesn't need to have a lot of that stuff, uh, you know. Um, but in any case, I can still recommend this knife. This will still go on my recommended knives playlist. Um, nothing else. Doesn't blow me away. It's not my favorite knife in the world, right? Um, but I'm happy with the way that this came out, and I think a lot of people will like it. Um, would have been really great to see it a little bit less expensive. I, I got to be honest with you, but that's a gut feeling thing. So when I pick it up and feel it, 120 bucks, I'd have been like, hey, wow, cool. 140, 150, 140 to 155, whatever it's falling in there. It's eh, it's okay. Um, knife is made in China, just so you guys know. Some people care, some people don't. It's your money, do what you want with it. Um, but as far as quality goes, as far as the execution of the intended design and when, when, and I'm sorry, where it's meant to be used, at least from my perspective. Yeah, I think they got that pretty much right. Anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it for today's review. Uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Make sure you check out the links for this guy down in the description as well as, uh, links for Wee Knives in general. Uh, if you guys decide to use those links, it does benefit my channel. If not, that's okay too. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.